Hey guys, quick question here. Welcome back to the channel. 28th of February. Seems like another February's went by without me getting a Valentine's, but I'm not ready to give up yet. Since it's the last day of February, I'm gonna give the whole girlfriend thing one last try. How am I gonna do this, you might ask? Easy. The last possible thing that I can think of. I uploaded a picture of myself with my Macy's Day Eruptor. Hey guys, Crib Crusher here. Wow, what a day. I'm starting to feel like they were only using me for my Macy's Day Eruptor though. Well that was fun but I'm done with the whole Valentine's thing. And to say goodbye to February in the only way I know possible, let's make a basically video. Not just that, but let's talk about the only Skylander that ever got a Valentine's Day variant. <laughs> not you. Pop Fizz. Just like most of the Skylanders that I've talked about for the past six months, Pop Fizz is a very iconic character. His popularity is well deserved though. He's just a really funny Skylander with a really charming personality. In my opinion, Pop Fizz was the first ever Skylander to really have a complex moveset, making him one of the most innovative characters in the series. Because it's true, back in 2012, compared to the other new Skylanders, Pop Fizz was the most interesting to play as. So get ready to master your Pop Fizz skills. Basically. It's clear from just one look at Pop Fizz that he's a little bit crazy. I mean, no offense to the guy, he seems quite nice, but there's no avoiding it. But if you want to play well as a Skylander, you have to know their history. So let's have a look at Pop Fizz's backstory. Nobody actually knows what Pop Fizz looked like before he became an alchemist. Probably because he tested all of his potions on himself, and it's needless to say that it probably had some, um, side effects. And you know what they say, nobody wants to work with a mad scientist. And sadly because of this, Pop Fizz is quite a lonely guy. So Pop Fizz tried to develop a concoction that would make him more charming. If you ask me, he doesn't need that. Little did he know the potion he was creating could actually turn him into a powerful beast. But of course he tested it on himself so he did find out eventually. And that's all there is for his backstory, and I'm gonna ask once again, just like Trigger Happy, who is recruiting these guys and are they getting background checks? Pop Fizz is an unstable threat to society, and he needs to be stopped. So, did we learn anything about Pop Fizz through his backstory? No. And will it benefit our gameplay in any way? N no. But... Okay, well, let's get onto his moveset so I can finally show you guys how interesting he is. Pop Fizz's primary attack is a simple potion lob. He simply throws a potion that explodes on contact. He can throw the potion far away for long range attacks, but if he's close to an enemy, he can just slam it down. It does the same thing. And his second move shows Pop Fizz's main gimmick the beast mode. Simply press the second button and you will drink your potion and become this crazy looking beast. Now instead of throwing potions, when you press the primary button, he just starts to swing his claws around like crazy. He's a lot stronger than he is when he's in his normal mode, but there is a little price to pay. It takes a couple seconds for him to drink his potion and then transform into the beast, which makes him very vulnerable for attacks. There is a simple solution to this, but we'll get onto that later. For now, you just have to get your timing right and hope that the enemies don't get you in time. Also, as soon as you go into your beast mode, a small meter will appear beside you. This indicates how long you can be in your beast mode for. Once it runs all the way down, you'll transform back into normal pop fizz, which once again does take a few seconds. Whilst it is rewarding, the beast mode is quite dodgy. For the first upgrade, we unlock the third move. By pressing the button, Pop Fizz will shake his potion and it will change to a different type. You have your basic orange which just explodes when you throw at an enemy, but now you have purple potions, 
When you throw this potion, it suddenly comes to life and starts shooting enemies alongside you. And you can have up to 3 of these bad boys at once. But don't get too attached to them because after a while they kinda just die and then their juices spill out. It, it's not nice. Thank you for your services, Fred. You will not be forgotten. Whilst I do love these little guys, they're not exactly strong. Of course, they do deal damage, so you do want these guys out at all times. But for me, their main use comes in the fact that enemies will also target them. And since the enemies are distracted with the potions, I think you know where this is going, you can now transform into your beast mode without being vulnerable. I'm not sure if it was deliberate, but those purple potions and the beast mode just work so well together. And for a second upgrade, Pop Fizz unlocks yet another type of potion. If you shake it again, then your potion will become green. When you throw it, this potion breaks and leaves a puddle of acid that does damage over time. This potion is not nearly as interesting as the purple one. It really isn't that good, the damage it deals is not impressive whatsoever. And the acid puddle does not last for nearly as long as it should. But on a better note, the next upgrade allows your attacks in beast mode to do extra damage. Thank god we got at least one beast mode upgrade. You know, it's not like it's his signature move or anything. And then for the final upgrade, we're right back to potions, because now Pop Fizz can throw and reload his potions a lot faster. I'm gonna be honest, so far Pop Fizz looks like a very promising Skylander. We're not even onto the upgrade paths yet, and his moveset already feels pretty complex. But speaking of which, now we are faced with the split upgrade paths. One of them focusing on your beast mode, and the other one focusing on your potions. So for obvious reasons, let's first take a look at the beast path. The first upgrade for this path makes your beast meter drain slower and recharge faster. And then the middle upgrade takes that to a whole new level. Because now when you damage an enemy or an object, your meter starts to fill up. Basically, the more you hit enemies, the longer you can stay in your beast form. And if you're in constant combat, this means that you'll probably be in beast mode for the entire fight. But the absolute highlight of this path is easily upgrade number 3. With this upgrade, you finally get to use your third attack with the beast mode. And what's cool about this is that the upgrade unlocks 3 different attacks. It all depends on what potion you drink when you turn into the beast. If you drink the green potion, then Pop Fizz's third attack is just spinning around like crazy, doing tons of damage in a large area. This is unbelievably satisfying to do on a group of enemies. If you drink the purple potion, Pop Fizz does a massive leap that does an insane amount of damage. This is really useful for singling out enemies, you take a giant leap to them and if they aren't already dead, just swing your claws at them a couple times. While the green potion does good when you're surrounded by enemies, the purple move is a lot better if there's a few enemies in front of you. But none of these even come close to the normal potion attack. When you drink the normal potion, you unlock the ability to breathe fire. Just when you think Pop Fizz can't get any weirder, he starts breathing fire. This is definitely my favourite of the three, and you can keep on doing it for as long as you want. You can even change the direction of your fire breath, which is so useful. These three attacks make damaging enemies and regaining your meter an absolute breeze. If you're in an arena battle like me, then you're most likely going to be in the beast mode for the entire time. That's just how overpowered it is. Well, it looks like we're done with this path. So I've run into a problem. I have to show you guys the potion path, but I'm not giving this guy the potion path. It's a good thing I always keep one of these guys in my hood just in case. It's uncomfortable, but I knew it was going to come in handy at some point. For the first upgrade from your bottom path, all of your potions now do more damage and their special effects are enhanced. 
For your normal potions, this simply just means that they do more damage. But for the purple ones, now your little potions are a lot stronger and they stay around for longer. And for the green potion, the acid puddles stay around for longer. Why does this still suck? This is an alright upgrade, it's nothing incredibly special. I will admit though, the purple potions being stronger was really effective. The middle upgrade is definitely the most interesting one for this path. Now if you mix different potions into the acid puddles, different things will happen. If you throw a purple potion into the acid, then your purple potion buddies will turn green and are faster and a lot stronger. And if you throw a normal potion at the acid puddle, all of the acid just sets on fire. On paper, this sounds like a really cool idea for an upgrade. Only problem is, the execution was not that good. Chucking the purple potions into the acid puddles felt like a complete chore. I found it super inaccurate and really hard to actually get them in the acid. You're honestly much better off just not trying to throw them into the acid as it's a complete waste of time. The purple potions are fine on their own anyway. And whilst it is significantly easier to throw the normal potions in the acid, even when you do, it looks cool but the damage is nowhere near rewarding enough. This upgrade just doesn't work well. It's never something you do naturally because it's so uncomfortable and annoying to try and pull off. I think this stems from the fact that the acid puddles go away so quickly and they are so small. There should have either been some sort of upgrade to make them bigger and last longer, or maybe they should have just been like that from the start. But sadly, I'm not a fan of this. But for the last upgrade, now if you throw a potion and you keep the button held down, Pop Fizz reaches into his bag and he can throw three potions at once. This is very helpful for crowd control, and it allows you to quickly throw all three of your purple potions. But that's really it for this path kinda disappointing. So now that we've looked at both paths, let's analyse them fully and think hard about which one's better, it's the beast one. Now that I've fully experienced the beast mode, it just feels so wrong to go to the potion path and not be able to use my third attack. We've already mentioned that the beast mode is stronger than the normal mode, so it's a no brainer. And not only that, but the potion path is not even remotely interesting. I don't think it matters which version of Pop Fizz you're using, you should always go for the top path. Maybe I'm just not using it right and you guys do like this path, let me know in the comments. If you've been smart boys and girls and listened to me, then you've picked the beast mode and you're now a Pop Fizz wizard. Pop Fizzard. But we're not done quite just yet, we still have a soul gem and two wow pals to look at. Let's start off with his soul gem. If you keep on mashing the third button, Pop Fizz starts to shake the potion so much that it eventually explodes. This does take a little bit of time to charge up, but it's quite a devastating attack. Also, I just think it's a really unique and cool one. I'll admit, this move isn't incredibly optimal, but it's just a whole lot of fun to use. And whilst yes, the potion path makes this soul gem stronger, no, just, just please go for Beast. Now let's take a look at Series 2 Pop Fizz's Wow Pow. Sometimes when he throws his purple potion, one of them will be a big boy. And when I say sometimes, I mean pretty much all the time. The big purple potion simply just has more health and does more damage. But look at him, you gotta love him. While some wow pals end up being too complicated and just not worth all the effort, Series 2 Pop Fizz's wow pal is simple and that's what makes it great. It really is a win-win situation. The win-win being that you have a cool wow pal and Activision's got you to buy the same character twice. Pfft, can't be me. No, I've got four of them. Now let's move on to our Valentine special, Fizzy Frenzy Pop Fizz. For Series 3 Pop Fizz's Wild Pal, now instead of just pressing the second button once, if you keep on mashing it, you just drink more and more potion until you become a mega big beast. That's not an official name. This just turns you into a massive, terrifying beast. Sure, you walk a lot slower than a normal beast, 
but trust me, the damage more than makes up for that. Every single beast mode attack does so much more damage here, and it gives you even more reason to pick the beast path. Also, he's pretty goofy. Look at him go. Pop Fizz is truly so much fun to play. His moveset is all about experimenting, mixing potions, seeing what you like the most. And I find that really cool, every player plays Pop Fizz in a different way. Obviously I'm the best player but I think everybody already knew that. So once again, here comes that question, is Pop Fizz good? 100%. He is so strong and so fun to play as. I love how all of his moves are connected to each other in some way, it makes him really unique and as I said, pretty fun. I know this is going to sound crazy, but if you're using beast mode, I'd give Pop Fizz a 9 out of 10. He is without a doubt one of my favourite Skylanders of all time. So in conclusion, Pop Fizz is a pretty good Skylander. I have to admit though, his potions are so overrated. Cranberry juice? Now that's a man's drink. <laughs>